Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Flinch Squad Ultra Series circuit. It has been the longest time since I've been able to catch up on this circuit but it is still going on now and we're going to do a quick fire episode today to cover our group stages of the circuit. So we've had our Swiss stages that determines where these players will be seeded going into a group stage before they enter into a top eight cut of the tournament. So the group stages, as you can see on your screen right now, they will be the group stages. We've got group A consisting of Shade, Costa, Alex, Xenophist Ace. Group B consisting of Stu, Chansey, Mansi, Krim, Pokemon, VGC. Group C of Yorine, Worms, Kazumi, Cameron, and then Group D, consisting of Will, Johnny Hacks, Salty, Electabuzz, Marcus, and Nappy, and Group E, the final group consisting of Luigi, Salkron, VGC, Brian, PB Herbert, uh, Pinko, VGC, and Nightlight. So, a very exciting selection of groups that we've got going into this next stage of the tournament. And like I say, what we'll be doing is featuring one match from each week of the tournament before we announce the, the results of the group stages and announce the top eight of the tournament going into next week where we'll be covering those top eight games before we proceed to the semi-finals and then final where we'll be crowning at Flinch Squad Circuit Ultra Series Champion. I'm sorry it's been a little bit of time between the last episode and now, obviously with a lot of things going on with Thea being born and adjusting to life um, with a little baby around the house. It's been a little while but I'm hoping you enjoyed today's episodes. We're going to kick off with a match between Shade and Xenophis Ace from Group A this week, so this is week one that we'll be featuring in our first match, and like I say, it'll be Shade versus Xenophis Ace. So, without further ado, guys, let's get into this tasty one today. So kicking off with Shade on the bottom of your screen, Light and Xenophist on the top of your screen, Xenophist A. So you can see that Xenophist is running that low punny, which looks like a mega low punny. Going to be kicking off with him on the top of your screen, like I've just mentioned here, and Shade on the bottom of your screen. Xenophist A sending out that low punny and the Tapu Lele here to kick us off today, as we see Shade kicking out with the Minetric and the Tapu Fini. Looks like it's going to be mega Minetric from Shade, but you can never tell until we get into into this game. The Psychic Terrain activating on the field but then nullified by that Misty Terrain from the Slaw Tapu Fini here as we go into turn one. We are going to see the Low Pony Mega Evolve and activate that Mega Evolution Stone turning into Mega Low Pony here. Going to have access to Fake Out so going to be able to shut something down this turn which makes real use of that Misty Terrain from Shades Tapu Fini here. Uh, we are going to see following suit the Mega Minetric going to appear now, Mega Evolving and also going to activate its new ability Intimidate which is very useful especially against that Mega Low Pony that is going to be speed tying with a base speed of 135 both of these Megas on the field now. We are going to see the Mega Minetric just avoid this Fake Out turn 1 and just protect here as we see a no Fake Out coming out, Moonblast into that Mega Minetric from potentially a Scarf Tapu Lele there and a return as well trying to take the Minetric down as an icy win fired off from this type of finny really nice play here from shade as he does try and get some sort of speed advantage going to this next turn as we see the tabulele move before everything else indicating that it is scarf now the minetric gonna have the jump on everything gonna be able to vault switch if it wants to this turn as we see the tabulele switch out and the tapu coco now into the field gonna bolster and power up those electric type attacks from this minetric now as it is gonna be firing off potentially a vault switch but is it into that low punny slot if it is it's gonna be blocked by a protect that is just thrown up here as we see the Minetric now go for that Volt Switch but into that slot so nice play there from Xenophis to get around this as we see a light screen come out from Shade side of the field going to boost that special defense for the next five turns with that light screen there from the Tapu Fini really help out against the Tapu Coco that has just hit the field as well now Zygarde going to make its first appearance of the match nice and shiny as well as we see it hit the field to get around a potential electric type attack from this Tapu Coco now the Volt Switch going into the low penny here and doing some nice damage boosted by that electric terrain as Tapu Fini comes back onto the field now activating and overwriting that electric terrain with its misty terrain and in suit it will activate a misty seed on the Zygarde here boosting that special defense even further behind this light screen we are going to see the Tapu Koko activate and launch out its Z crystal it's going to be the Gigavolt Havoc you've got to imagine it will be into that Tapu Fini slot if it is it's going to be 
not doing anything to the Zygarde here because of its ground typing, which unfortunately it doesn't with a return following up into that slot and not doing too much damage. That Intimidate really helping there. Top of Finney now going to switch straight back out, preserve itself for later on in this match. And there are two Tapus on Zenith's side of the field to come in and overwrite and disrupt this terrain here for him. As we see the Manetric come back on, shuffle another Intimidate onto that low pony, which is so useful. As we see it just retreat though, and Necrozma now come out and hit the field for Xenophysteus. It is going to be that Dawn Wings Necrozma as we see a torn from the Tapu Koko. It's going to be into that Manetric slot now to try and shut down whatever that Tapu Fini was doing as a thousand arrows is just freely allowed to be fired out from this Zygarde doing some nice damage to the Tapu Koko and a decent amount of chip to this Necrozma now. We are going to see the Dawn Wings Necrozma Ultra Burst for the first time here. You've got to remember though that there are two special attackers on Xenophysteus side of the field. The light screen is up and this Misty Seed is activated on this Zygod, so not going to have the easiest time dealing with it, but we do just see it protect this turn to get around any damage from this Minetric here, as we do see a Snarl fired out from this Minetric, so you can see Shade really going heavy on this special defensive side of things here, lowering the special attack on this Tapu Koko, and potentially it would have on that Necrozma if it hadn't already gone for that Protect, but we do see a U-turn now, where the Tapu Koko is going to just switch out and reposition itself, and you've got to think that Tapu Lele comes in now at then will put a lot of pressure on with its scarf at speeding everything on shit so the field but with this light screen still in effect and the seed effect on the Zygarde going to be able to still uh, probably withstand some attacks from this Tapu Lele as another thousand arrows fired out here doing some decent damage onto the Tapu Lele. Tapu Lele now in a position to take down the Manetric potentially with a Psychic so going to be a little bit worried about that here as we do see the Zygarde just forego that Misty Seed boost and get this Tapu Fini back onto the field and maybe in hindsight for the, the longevity of the match and what you want to be doing it's probably better to get rid of that terrain now as we do see a Psy Shock. <coughs> Come out into the Manetric and followed up by a Snarl from the Manetric here into both targets in Necrozma. And a lot of the special attack on both targets, the Tapu Lele and the Necrozma by one stage here. Now the Necrozma is going for a Photon Geyser. It's going to be into the uh, Mega Manetric slot and it is going to be enough to pick up the Knockout. So pretty even here as we're going into these latter turns of the game. The light screen wearing off now so that protection from the the Tapu Fini earlier in the game going to be disappearing but the Snarl has really taken effect already so we'll be doing some decent useful damage you've got to worry about a Z move coming out from this Necrozma as we do see a critical hit Psy Shock into the Fini now followed up by a Photon Geyser going to be into that slot and enough to pick up the knockout removing the light screen uh, potential there from the Tepo Fini but the Zygod left unchecked here and throwing out a thousand arrows going to get some more damage onto both that Tapu Lele and the Necrozma taking away not only the Tapu Lele but the uh, advantage of that Psychic Terrain coming back onto the field and we all know that Zygod normally carries extreme speed and a lot of the Pokemon on Xenophis' side of the field do and are prone to going down uh, or in range from that extreme speed now from the Zygote. Got to get around this fake up from this Mega Low Pony, which is going to throw out now into the Zygote slot. So it does actually go for that extreme speed, as we can see, um, and not going to be able to get it as a power gem coming out from this Necrozma. But hot oh, bulky enough to take that and get a Tailwind off, which is huge for Shade here, as he is going to have the speed advantage going into this next turn, going to have everything faster on his side of the field. And we do see the forfeit because of that speed control that he does pick up there so that is game one and we'll go straight into a game two here here we are getting into game two can Xenophis come back and tie this one up or can Shade take a clean 2-0 victory we're going to see a little bit of a switch up from Xenophis here as he does lead out with that Salamence and the Tapu Koko as we do see Shade lead off with the Zygarde and Tapu Fini this time around the Tapu Fini proving to be such a useful member of Shade's team overriding any of the other Tapu terrains that come out for Xenophis day we do see the Tapu Koko activate that electric terrain, but it will be soon overwritten by the Tapu Fini Misty terrain. And Intimidate coming out from the Salamence it's going to be useful, especially onto that Zygarde, primarily a physical attacker. And there is the Misty terrain activating with the Misty Seed proccing on that.
add Zygarde, boosting the Nits, special defense by one stage. We do see the Tapu Fini switch out straight away now. Manetric gonna hit the field once again, and now, because it's not Mega Evolved, it will have activated that Lightning Rod support here, so if the Tapu Koko does go for an Electric type attack, it is gonna be pulled in, and it will not do anything because of the Lightning Rod ability. Mega Salamence gonna appear, activating that Mega Evolution. No Electric type attack, maybe Xenophis predicting the Lightning Rod coming onto the field from Manetric, just going for that safer U-turn to pivot out and get a bit better board position as the Tepu Lele now comes onto the field for Xenophis and then this next turn obviously going to be able to put a lot of pressure on to Shade's side with this Scarf Tepu Lele that we've seen from game one. We're now going to see additional speed control set up now from the Salamence taking advantage of this free turn and it is going to get this Tailwind up as we do see a coil now come out from this Zygarde going to boost its attack and accuracy and defense by one stage apiece so is threatened still from this Tapu Lele on Xenophis side of the field and got to remember that everything on Xenophis side is boosted by that Tailwind now for the next three turns. We're going to see the Manetric Mega Evolve. It is going to activate its newly found uh, Intimidate ability and reduce the attack power of that Salamence at least and not really affecting the Tapu Lele as we do see a Moonblast fired out from the Tapu Lele straight into the Zygarde here. But because of that defense boost on the special side, it is going to be able to take that and a double edge following up into the Zygarde. Gonna be able to take it with the combination of the coil and the Intimidate support from the Minetric taking that double edge pretty nicely there just hanging on and that means if it is this power construct <laughs> a variant it is going to be able to uh, get that evolution this turn and uh, transform itself into get a bit more HP back and it does fire out a thousand hours get some decent damage to both targets here as the Minetric does fire off a snarl as well power construct now activating Zygarde gonna turn from the 50% form into its 100% form get its HP a little bit back there and become a bit more threatening going into this next turn for sure as we see it go right nearly up to half health as the Tapu Lele does switch out now and the Tapu Koko hit the field once again for Xenophist Preserving that Tapu Lele for later on in the game, I would imagine to come in and try and get a bit more damage onto this this Zygarde before it can do very much more and uh, probably wants to uh, try and weed out the Tapu Fini here and maybe scout out the, the extreme speed that would be coming onto that Tapu Lele here. We're going to see a Volt Switch just come out from the Manetric into that Tapu Koko slot that was the Tapu Lele as we see um, uh, a double edge into the Zygarde there. With the Tapu Fini now coming onto the field, going to activate that terrain. And uh, Xenovir is playing this really nice because he is keeping that Tapu Lele in the back that he can bring in um, and nullify any sort of extreme speed support going into this next turn. We are going to see the Gigavolt Havoc now fired off. He's not calling, he's not taking the bluff from game one. He is going straight for this Gigavolt Havoc. It is going to be into the Tapu Fini. No point of going for it into the Zygarde here. Going to be able to remove this Tapu Fini from the field, even though the, the electric terrain isn't active. And removing this Tapu Fini now is pretty big. It stops the uh, the light screen it stops uh, the any interference with the psychic train when it comes back onto the field with the tapu lele so Xenophis playing this really nicely another double edge here from the salamence going to be into the zygarde not going to be enough though we've already seen damage there not quite enough there's another thousand arrows fired out from the zygarde will it be enough to get the coco it should be not enough to get the salamence though um and uh, the one problem that uh, shade has now is if the tapu lele does come back in he cannot utilize that extreme speed that would be enough probably to take down the Tapu Lele and definitely enough to take down that Salamence and you've got to think Thousand Arrows is biting him a little bit because of the fact that the Salamence has been grounded by the Thousand Arrows and will be affected by the terrain for the next few turns. Now we do see the whole all come in for Shade now he's got a pretty easy turn where he can go for a Tailwind and a Protect with his Zygarde but the thing is, oh, she had not realizing that the, the Salamence is on the floor and the Dazzling Gleam coming out. Can the Zygarde take it? It can't, unfortunately, going down here. Um, but can we see the hot or get the Tailwind up? It needs a speed control advantage, but Salamence going to go for that anyway and uh, get the speed control. Is she going to match that? It is going to match it. And you've got to think the Manetric coming back in now is going to have a good opportunity to try and do something here and um, but will it be able to take a side shock in the psychic terrain that's another thing you're gonna have to probably prioritize the hot or to take down the tapu lele before you do anything with this manetric the salamence is pretty weakened now from double intimidate as we see the lele switch out we are going to see the necrozma hit the field once again for 
Zenithus there is, and he does look like he's in a good position now, but the Renetric not protecting here, going for the Snarl, going to outspeed the Salamence, pick up the knockout there, get an important Snarl onto this Dawn Rings to Crossman, leaving it open for possibly a Brave Bird, possibly a Sacred Fire here from this hot or it is the Brave Bird, will this be enough to pick up the knockout? It's going to be a big, strong, powerful attack, and if it is, it will probably be enough to tie up this game here. It's not quite enough. It does put it down to a low health though. Has the Lele got enough in the tank to take down this Manetric with a side shock? The Psychic Terrain is up. The Manetric is the second fastest thing on the field right now. We are going to see this Stormwings Necrozma go for that Ultra Reversion. It's going to Ultra Burst and become Ultra Necrozma, but very low health now. He all hinges on this Tapu Lele, whether or not the side shock can take down the Manetric. And this is it. Can it do it? And the Manetric actually taking it, getting a snarl off. Going to be in enough to pick up the Ultra Necrozma, do enough to this Tapalele and put it in a position where this ho -Oh is going to be able to close this match up for Shade and what a great set for us to kick off this group stage is week one with Shade taking a 2-0 victory but no shame on Xenophist's performance here, he's played so well and made it very difficult for Shade to eke out any sort of victory there, massive props to both players. So that is the first game that we have featured for you today from group one week one of the the uh, the group stages and we'll be going into our next match right now which will be from group two which will be featuring two players from group c we will be featuring two matches from group c it will be worm's eye versus cameron so we'll head straight over into that match right now and we'll have a look how these players get on to kick us off into week two of the tournament so you can see that we've got Cameron on the top of your screen and Worm's Eye on the bottom of your screen. We're going to kick off with Cameron here and he will be leading out with a combination of Togekiss and Ferrothorn. So very support oriented pair here as we see Nigel lead out with that Rayquaza. And Xerneas is restricted combination going all in turn one. Now the Ferrothorn is a nice lead here. It does face up well to the, the Xerneas. You've got to worry about maybe a fire type attack on this Rayquaza but you've got the Fer uh, the Togekiss here on Cameron's side of the field to pull in those those fire type attacks and just give that Ferrothorn a little bit of protection to put a bit more pressure on that Xerneas. We are going to see the Rayquaza switch out and Cinemore hit the field now for Worm's Eye. Going to get the Intimidate onto the Ferrothorn as the Xerneas does just protect this turn. It does open the door for the Togekiss to potentially go for a Tailwind but just opting for that Follow Me this first turn here as we are going to see the Ferrothorn go for a Jarable into... It's actually going to be into that Rayquaza slot so getting a little bit of damage onto the Incineroar and nicely predicted there from Cameron predicting that Protect from the Xerneas here. We are going to see the Ferrothorn now switch out, save itself for later in the game as we see the Groudon hit the field for Cameron is going to Primal Revert and turn into Primal Groudon here and uh, it matches up pretty nicely against the Xerneas even if we see a Geomancy come out now. One of the things I would love to see here would be an Encore from the Togekiss if a potential Geomancy comes out from Nigel's side of the field uh, you can lock it in and lock it into that Geomancy good, shutting it down for the rest of this turn but we're going to see Fake out here from the Incineroar, denying any potential Encore use here from that Togekiss as we see the Geomancy now set up from the Xerneas and in a really nice position early on in this game to start throwing out some big damage here going forward. So the Xerneas gets its Geomancy boost up, the Power Herb activating special attack, special defense and speed boosted by two points and as we've seen so many times through this whole 2019 season if you get your Zonia set up it's extremely dangerous and really difficult for your opponent to deal with going forward. We are going to see the Incineroar switch back out now. The Rayquaza are going to hit the field and activate that airlock as we see the Togekiss just protect this turn and we'll see the Groudon Taking a Dazzling Gleam from the Xerneas, so Nigel starting the onslaught with a Dazzling Gleam, going to get some decent damage onto this Groudon, even though it is resisted, and a Substitute come out, which is a really nice play here from the Groudon, going to put itself in a decent position to start doing and pressuring some damage from Nigel's side of the field, because then the Xerneas really has to throw out these Dazzling Gleams because of the Follow Me pressure that the Togekiss does carry. Now we're going to see the Rayquaza Mega Evolve, it is going to actually get rid of the Desolate Land now and overwrite it with the Delta stream it is in a bit of an awkward position because the will have to double tap into the Togekiss slot but like I say a Dragon Ascent and 
a Dazzling Gleam should be enough to get it here. Now the Moonblast coming out, not opting for the Dazzling Gleam, going to be enough to, not enough to get the Togekiss. And an Earth Power, not enough. It's going to be immune by the Togekiss, given this ground on a free turn. This is why the Dazzling Gleam would have been a maybe a better option with that, that Dragon Ascent here and doing some nice damage to the Xerneas and making a little bit of leeway back into this match. The Groudon's still got a substitute. Togekiss now going to switch it out. We are going to see the Ferrothorn hit the field once again for Cameron as he is just going to protect this ground on this turn and just make sure that he does have another time around getting at least some damage off onto the Xerneas as we do see this time the Dazzling Lean come out from the Xerneas as we'll probably see a double up with that Earth Power this next turn now. Really nice plays here from Cameron. He is putting himself into a decent position where he is going to be able to do some decent damage and force and kind of Nigel's hand um, into attacking this Ferrothorn to protect the Xerneas going into this next turn. So you see the Groudon just switch out, a Dazzling Gleam coming out from this Xerneas is going to be enough to pick up the Togekiss here and take this Ferrothorn down to half health. It's taking a lot of damage. Is it going to be in, able to take a Dragon Ascent from here? I really don't feel like it is going to be able to. Fortunately, kind of looking at something like a Cobra Berry in this situation where it would be able to handle this and then deal with that Xerneas, but the Dragon Ascent, unfortunately, too much. The Ferrothorn just takes too much damage coming in here and uh, a little bit of iron bobs damage coming back onto the Rayquaza. Gonna be able to just pick up the knockout there which is a bit unfortunate for Cameron. He's done so well but you can see how dangerous this Xerneas is. Groudon coming in after losing its substitute and uh, the Rayquaza coming out as well alongside it to uh, combine to make Cameron's last two Pokemon here and that's what I mean the Xerneas getting powered up with that Geomancy just even against the things that threaten it the most as long as you've got the support options next to it just too much sometimes to get around that huge damage that we are so many times seeing Xerneas do after that Geomancy setup. now we'll get into game two and uh, as again we can see that Cameron is on the top of your screen and Nigel Worms Eye on the bottom of your screen. So Worms Eye taking an early one nil lead. He is going to lead out exactly the same this game with the Rayquaza and the Xerneas. And Cameron lead out with this Togekiss and Melotic. So we're going to see a little bit of a switch up here from Cameron. Melotic, a nice option here from him to uh, prevent and put off the Incineroar coming back onto the field here for Nigel as the support around that Xerneas, especially if the Groudon comes in next to the Melotic. And Melotic, one of those Pokemon that has been known and does have access to Haze, which could shut down that Xerneas set up here. So we'll see the Rayquaza just go straight for that Mega Evolution, get that Delta Stream up as the Togekiss goes for the Protect Turn 1, not wanting to take any damage early on as an Extreme Speed comes out into that slot. And we are going to see the Xerneas not go for the Geomancy here, maybe suspecting the Haze on the Melotic and just fire off a Dazzling Gleam, get some damage onto both targets, but not onto the Togekiss that has just revealed that Protect there as we see an Ice Beam from the Melotic into that Rayquaza, but because of the Assault Vest potentially there and the Delta to stream not doing very much damage the togekiss going to retreat now Groudon going to hit the field and overwrite this delta stream which makes these ice beams a little more threatening from melotic going into this next turn as we see the Groudon primal revert and overwrite the delta stream with the desolate land and it'll be a nice switch in to take a potential dazzling gleam or moon blast from the xerneas this next turn as we see the extreme harsh sunlight activate another extreme speed coming out from the requires are going to be into that crowd on slot critical hit there doing some decent damages another dazzling gleam fired out from this Xerneas here as we are going to see the Melotic fire out another Ice Beam and this time it will do a lot more damage. No protection from that Delta Stream but that Assault Vest still coming in so handy then. We see how, how powerful that Assault Vest is as the Groudon now just protecting this next turn. Wants to get around a potential Earth Power from the Rayquaza but it's not entertaining that. It's just got its eye set on this Melotic. Gonna go straight into that and pick up a big knockout there. Taking down one of the biggest threats to Nigel's potential Geomancy setup. I wonder if we will see the Diego go for the Geomancy here and if he does, he doesn't go for it here but a nice play if he does. Just gone for the Moonblast into that Groudon but blocked by that Protect. Now the Togekiss coming back onto the field. We saw how effective this was in game one for Cameron with that follow me support from the Togekiss but we're not actually going to see that. We're just going to see the Rayquaza go for that Dragon Ascent into the Togekiss. Just get some damage off and do some big damage as well. Taking it down below 50% here. The 
Groudon left unchecked here, but what is the Xerneas going to do? It's just going to go for a Dazzling Gleam, not entertaining the Geomancy boosting here as the Togekiss is able to take that combination and substitute setup on this Groudon, but taking a lot of damage in the process. And the Togekiss going for an Encore now. It has went for the Encore, and Nigel not falling for a really nice play from Nigel here, locking into that Dazzling Gleam rather than the... Um, the Geomancy here as the Togekiss does go out and it's just a bit unfortunate for Cameron as you would kind of really want to be able to um, to lock into that Geomancy would open the game a few but unfortunately Nigel not falling for it here as we see a Dragon Ascent from the Rayquaza into the Groudon now got to be enough to take down this substitute and then you've got to think a Dazzling Gleam will be enough to take down the Groudon even though it is resisted the Ferrothorn in a nice position but Ferrothorn and Togekiss the task is getting harder for them to be able to take down this Mega Rayquaza and Xerneas and this combination just coming out from Nigel here is going to be able to do so. It's just cut through Cameron's team. He's not been able to handle it as well as he would have imagined and would have liked to have been able to handle it and it's just because Nigel's been making all the right plays all along the way. We're going to see the Togekiss just go for a Protect here. Maybe the Ferrothorn is able to take down this Xerneas but if he does he's still got another three Pokemon to deal with as the Rayquaza. Going to fire off another the dragon is sent into this Ferrothorn slot. Now, the thing that Nig uh, Cameron could do here is go for a, a Gyrobolt into the Rayquaza and take that down, but it's you're probably better going for the Xerneas here as we see another Dazzling Gleam knowing that that slot is Encore locked into that, that move um, as we see the Ferrothorn now throw out this Gyrobolt after the Dazzling Gleam into the Xerneas and uh, just such a bulky Xerneas as well not even going down to that and uh, there we go there is the forfeit and Nigel taking that one a clean sweep so really good game from both players and um, that takes us to the end of a week two that was our group two stage match and uh, we'll move into our group three stage um, of the tournament here and we'll finish off with a match between I'm going to be featuring Nigel once again Worms Eye and this time it will be against Yorine and it will be to decide who wins group C um, we've got both of them with one with two wins each going into this third match and one of them whoever wins will top the group and the other one it will determine the seeding with where you go into the, group. the top eight seeds of this tournament and there will be two extra placings so there will be some playoffs to determine the actual top eight so winning this match is pretty important for both players here it's going to be pretty big and really good players have both performed so well through the sun the moon and then this ultra series getting so far in this tournament and both looking like they're going to be proceeding on to the next stage so it'll be a real heated battle going into this one um, and we'll hop over into it momentarily and as you can see we've got your eye on the top of your screen worm's eye on the bottom of your screen once again it'll be interesting to see if worm's eye is playing the same team that he featured in week two against Cameron and what Yorine has been playing so far. We're going to see Yorine lead out with the Minetric and the Xerneas and we will see Nigel lead out with Nilego and Tapu Fini here. So the Nilego are going to do a lot of work against the Xerneas straight away, putting on a lot of pressure. You've got to worry about a potential snarl from the Minetric but also Nigel has that Tapu Fini as well that has access to Haze that can shut down a potential Geomancy setup here as well. Um, but the big things that you probably want to get this this Xerneas out of here as soon as possible and get the ground on onto the field if you have got it in the back if you're Yorine. So we're going to see the Minetric Mega Revolver is going to be the fastest thing on the field. Getting Intimidate off but not so useful onto both these special attackers as we see a Snarl come out from this Minetric going to be able to reduce the special attack on this Nihiligo which is the big important thing and get a little bit of uh, a reduction on this type of Finny that's probably not as useful as you would maybe want it to be as a sludge bomb comes out from the Nihiligo into the Xerneas gonna just be able to take that after the snarl and a dazzling gleam coming out not wanting to go for the geomancy boost here as a light screen comes out from nigel's type of finny here gonna bolster the special defenses a bit more now the xerneas in a bit more of an awkward position now not gonna be able to um to as easily damage the things on uh, nigel's side of the field as he maybe would want to as the xerneas and the nihiligo protect here so nice play possibly from nigel here predicting the protect from that xerneas as we just see a volt switch from the minette into that type of finny and making nice work of it here you know it's in a position now where it's going to go down to a definitely a ground on precipice blades and uh, so definitely setting itself up well going into these next set of turns we may see an icy wind come up here from the type of finny 
because of the protect on the Nihilego wanting to reduce the speed on that Manetric, so you get at least the jump on it going into the next turn. But the Groudon not really going to worry about an Icy Wind too much. Still got to worry about a potential uh, Rocky MZ from this Nihilego that will do decent damage to the Groudon, but we are just going to see a Haze. And, you know, just being a bit precautious in case a Geomancy is coming out from that Xerneas here on your own side of the field. Xerneas now going to switch out, Incineroar hit the field for your own gonna have access to that fake out going into the next turn again gonna get an intimidate out but again onto the special attackers on Nigel's side of the field not really gonna be affecting them too much as the type of Finney does switch out for Nigel and Rayquaza now hit the field avoiding that intimidate drop from the incineral gotta worry about the Manetric in the back coming in this double intimidate on your own side of the field but a sludge bomb coming out now into this incineral and a precipice blade is going to be enough to pick up the nihilego which it does connect with and remove that threat from the field the requires are obviously immune to the ground type attacks so not taking any damage this turn but got to worry about a potential fake out coming in this next turn but Nigel playing and making a nice switch in and really, you know, if you don't fake out the Xerneas, it probably gets the Geomancy up. If you don't fake out the Rayquaza, it gets some damage onto your Groudon. So you've got to make a really big decision here as we see the Groudon just switch out. The Manetric come in for your eye. And I'd imagine you probably want to fake out the Xerneas here. It's a bigger threat. You don't want to let this Geomancy get set up. And knowing what Nigel's been playing with this Assault Vest Rayquaza, it's the one thing that you can probably let get an attack off maybe here but if it is an earth power into that ground on slot and it is into that mega manetric it is going to be potentially picking up an Oka here or doing some big damage so we've got to watch out for that as well because the combination of earth power and extreme speed if it doesn't pick up the knockout with the earth power will be a combination that can do a lot of damage so we are going to see the fake out into that Xerneas potentially shut down that geomancy and uh, an earth power that is what's coming out but the manetric does hang on that's a big thing here but like I say the earth power it does hang on but it is an extreme speed range and that's exactly what this requires is going to go for this next turn picking up the knockout onto the manetric here and what are we going to see the geomancy now Nigel taking his opportunity to geomancy boost and get this set up with his earliest and like we've seen in previous weeks he is going to be able to start doing and dishing out some big damage going into these next few turns and you know when you've got Xerneas versus Xerneas it's normally the Xerneas that gets set up first that you kind of want to put all your money on winning the match because it's always the race but we are going to see a snarl come out here from the Incineroar so given giving your eye a chance here with the Incineroar going to be able to at least neutralize or try and neutralize this Xerneas on Nigel's side of the field just reducing that special attack power by one which makes it a bit easier for the Groudon coming in it's a bit unfortunate that it does miss the Rayquaza because you kind of want that earth power to be reduced in power especially when your Groudon's threatened so heavily by it um, the Xerneas is still going to be able to throw out some big damage so you've got to watch out for that as a Dazzling Gleam now going to hit out but both Pokemon taking it kind of comfortably Incineroar not taking it too well but just proccing that berry which should put it just out of range from the Rayquaza's Earth Power going into this next turn if that's what we do see the Earth Power coming out now into that Incineroar and it is just about to take it so that berry coming in huge there and the oh, critical hit as well really unfortunate there for your iron as we do see more damage than it really should have done um, with the Precipice Blades coming out onto the Xerneas and a Flare Blitz now. You would have thought maybe the Snarl could have been a better turn there, but the Flare Blitz in the sun going to be doing a nice chunk of damage, putting that Xerneas in range for another Precipice Blades now. And there's the Incineral going down to the recall as Xerneas coming back in for your own. Has taken a bit of damage though, so it's not in the best positions here. Uh, you really want to be getting rid of the Xerneas on Nigel's side of the field before you can try and set up yourself. We are going to see a protect now from the Groudon on your own side of the field. And the Xerneas going for the Moonblast, not going for anything other than that into the Xerneas slot, taking it down even on plus one from that position. And uh, the Groudon left sitting in a really awkward position now not really going to be able to tackle the rest of Nigel's team so Nigel closing that first one up in a really close game but Nigel controlling the field very well there that near league putting on a lot of pressure from the beginning as we are going to go straight into game two again we're going to see Yorine on the top of your screen and Nigel will be on the bottom of your screen so Nigel going into this one one nil up can Yorine tie this one up he does change things up going into game two he has adjusted and brought the Salamence here along with that Incineroar, not the Mega Manetric here, going with the Mega Salamence this time around. And the Nihiligo and Tapu Fini, same combination coming out for Nigel here as we see the Misty Terrain set up from this Tapu Fini. And the Nihiligo again in a really nice position, 
just to cause so much and so many problems for um, urine side of the field. We can see potentially fake out and a tailwind here to get urine in a nicer position going into the latter turns of this game, but could Salamence have something like Bulldoze or Earthquake? That would be huge here if it can be able and it can threaten that Nihiligo then. We're just going to see a Tailwind straight away from this Salamence fired out. It isn't even going for a fake out from the Incineroar here as we see a Power Gem come out from the Nihiligo. Going to be straight into that Salamence. It will be able to take it, but if this is followed up by an Icy Wind, which it is, this will be enough to take down the Salamence and it's done enough to just get this Geomancy set up here, uh, this Tailwind set up here for the rest of the turn. And potentially put a Groudon into a really nice position when it comes onto the field for your eye next with the Xerneas lurking in the back. You've got to imagine the U-turn coming out from Incineroar. We're going to preserve that Intimidate for a little bit later on in the game. And you've got to think the Groudon is going to come out onto the field now. If you get the Groudon out with potentially your Xerneas, um, you could clear the field this next turn because you can Dazzling Gleam or you can Precipice Blades and Moonblast into that Tapu Fini slot and that might be enough to get the Tapu Fini on Nigel's side of the field and that might be enough to open up this game for you to, go, to carry on going forward. The Rayquaza is always going to be an issue though and I think if you're your eye and you really need to get the Geomancy set up with your Xerneas before you're able to deal with it really effectively you know without that geomancy boost it's going to be difficult to deal with it and take dragon ascent in the in, in the meantime we're going to see the nihiligo just switch out and the rayquaza come on to the field now activate that airlock overwrite the desolate land from this primal ground i'm just going to see a precipice blades come out from the ground on now it's going to be hitting that tapu finny obviously not affecting the rayquaza on Nigel side of the field because of the flying type there and the moon blast we are going to see the double up now is it enough I don't know if it will be from this range but it does enough damage it's taking it down and a special attack drop there from the type of Finny but activating one of those special 50% berries which is the wiki berry there and getting all that health back for the type of Finny and now we're seeing a nice play where Nigel revealing the Scald on the type of Finny and putting that Groudon into a horrible position here with that Surprise Scald switching from the Rayquaza. Going to take it down into extreme speed range. But we are going to see the Incineroar hit the field now for Uran. He's still got an opportunity with a potential Geomancy boost. He's getting the Intimidate onto that Rayquaza, which is the big important thing here. And then if he can get this Geomancy up, you've got to think he's still in this match. He's going to have the boost going into the next turn with an active fake out from this Incineroar that can shut down a potential haze from this type of Finny. But if we see a haze this turn and a Geomancy boost this turn, then it's all but over for your eye. And it depends what Nigel is able to do. We are just going to see a Dazzling Gleam here. No boost um, this turn around. And we are going to see a Dragon Ascent come out from this requires. I'm going to be into the Xerneas here as we see it do a decent chunk of damage um, but the Intimidate really helping out there going into this next turn and what is this type of thing going to do? Just another Scald, it's going to be into this Incineroar slot um, but able to take it a lot better than that Primal Groudon that we saw the previous turn get absolutely nuked by it. We are going to see the Rayquaza now switch out the Mysterious Winds are going to disappear as the Nihiligo hits the field once again are we going to see a Fake Out on Geomancy? That would be the best turn here for Yorani. If you can get set up he puts himself into a great position. He's still got the Groudon in the back, and the Xerneas is still in a nice position. It's got a nice amount of health going into the rest of this game to try and come back and make a comeback here. So we are going to see the Geomancy set up from this Xerneas. It makes it able to take the attacks from this Nihiligo a lot better, but the Nihiligo, we still have to worry about the potential Z move there from this Nihiligo. That's the one thing you have to worry about if you're Yorine, because the Incineroar has got the ability to throw out these Snarls. Dazzling Gleam going to be enough to take down this type of thing. do a decent chunk to the Nihiligo, but the, the Clear Smog's the other thing that you've got to worry about as well from this Nihiligo. That's the other worry. You know, it's not just the Sludge Bombs, it's a Clear Smog, because Nihiligo is such a good chunky pokemon able to take these boosted attacks and there we do we do see it the geomancy just wiped as the u-turn coming out from the incineral gonna get a decent amount of damage onto the nihiligo take it down below 50 percent health and position this ground on back onto the field but now nigel has the opportunity to get the rayquaza back onto the field and in a position now without the geomancy boosts from this zone is going to be able to clean up here and the Nihiligo in a position to just power gem the Groudon if the Incineroar comes back into the field for Yorion going to be able to pick up a knockout potentially on both targets here and a Dragon Ascent I would say is probably going to be enough to uh, maybe get the Xerneas probably not if you want to sludge bomb that slot though that's probably the slot to do it into 
pending the um, Intimidate coming in, which is coming in now for your end from this Incineroar as the Groudon does switch out for one more turn. Uh, it'll depend where we see this Nidego going. Is it going to go for the Sludge Bomb? It might be as we see an Earth Power into this Incineroar doing a nice chunk of damage there, taking it down to just below its Berry Point and the Figgy Berry activating on the Incineroar here and uh, giving it all that nice health back and we do see the sludge bomb and this should be enough to take down the Xerneas which it is leaving the ground on leaving the Incineroar as Yorin's last two Pokemon and again just as Nihiligo doing so much damage and causing so much trouble for Yorin throughout this match with this x-ray call that we've seen do so well in the Ultra Series this season so looks like Nigel going to pick up the win and top group C going into this last week of the tournament before we go into the top cut and Nigel making sure that he is stamping his mark on taking that top cut slot going into this next stage of the tournament with a Rocky MZ coming out from the Nile League. We're going to be this Continental Crush. It will be into the ground on probably a bit overkill here, but definitely enough to pick up the knockout here. You're probably looking at doubling into the ground on whatever you do here. The Incineroar can only fake out one target, so you just make sure you lock in on that ground on with both of your Pokemon making sure that you do take it down regardless of what happens here and the Incineroar left for your iron and definitely not going to have enough in the tank to come back and take this one as the Nihiligo gets another beast boost here and putting in so much work here as we are going to go into the last turn but there's the forfeit so massive props to Nigel and your in that last game was a great one to finish up our group stages so okay so you can see the results here we have shade topping out the the, the group stages and be coming in as seed one with three wins no losses then Luigi down in second place with four wins zero losses from his group um, he, he comes in as group as second seed here Nigel in third seed uh, Chansey Mansi in and fourth seed Stu in fifth seed and Urine just squeezing in even though despite that loss against Nigel squeezing in in sixth seed there and that's because of the group stages the weighting they have and that depends on the result the group stage seeding and then that will determine your final position here so the playoffs to make up our top eight are between Will in seventh, Salkran in eighth, Costa in ninth, and Johnny Hacks in tenth. So Will will play Johnny in a top eight playoff, and Salkran will play Costa in the next set. So it will be great to see those matches. We will feature them later in the week, and uh, then we'll move on to the top eight cut semi-finals and finals as we get into the latter stages of this tournament. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode, guys. I'm really sorry again that it's taken so long to get these games out, but it's been incredible featuring these games so far. I hope you've enjoyed them. We'll be back, like I say, to feature those playoff games to see who our final top eight will be between Will, Salker, and Johnny Hacks and Costa later in the week. So keep an eye out for that. I hope you're enjoying this series so far. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you for the next one. Until then, take care and bye-bye.